Hey everyone, my name is Stefan Arnold Austin, and I'm one of the software engineers behind CrySpark Live. For the next 10 minutes or so, I'll be walking you through a demo processing a real data set in CrySpark Live. This isn't a live demo, of course, because we're limited by webinar time constraints, but check out the on-screen timer to get a sense of how long this 2800 movie data set actually took. As mentioned, you can use CrySpark Live to process movies as they're captured by a microscope during a data collection session, or for users who don't have access to a microscope in-house, you can process all your data in one go and obtain a first cut reconstruction in a streamlined workflow. This allows you to get a glimpse into your 3D reconstruction very early on. Let's get started. When you first open up CrySpark Live, you'll be greeted with the Browse Sessions page. Here, you can navigate to all past and current sessions, see statistics, view running jobs, and start new sessions. I'm going to create a new session to process our data set. I'll be processing Empire 10288. This GPCR was collected using a Thermo Fisher Scientific Titan Krios and a Gatan K2 Summit Direct Electron Camera. The data set is about 500 gigabytes with almost 2,800 movies with 40 frames each in the TIFF format. When you first open a new live session, you'll be taken to the Configuration tab. There are a total of nine tabs, which you can access using the left navigation bar. On the Details tab, I can see general information, history, and notes about the session. Navigating to the Configuration tab, this is where I will input all the parameters for my dataset and set the hardware resources that this live session will use. I need to tell CrySpark Live where to find the movies and game reference for this dataset. I'll hit Enable, and once the session starts, CrySpark Live will constantly check for new movies that show up in the folder and select ones that match the wildcard filter. I only need these seven parameters to get the CrySpark Live session running, but since I've processed a similar dataset before, I'll use a configuration profile to auto-load the parameters we need. You can use profiles to speed up routine session setup to a couple of clicks. When selecting hardware resources, a minimum of three GPUs is required for CrySpark Live, one for pre-processing and two for reconstruction. However, we recommend four GPUs, so you can have two pre-processing workers to speed up processing time. I'll spawn two pre-processing workers for the session. Now that all the required parameters have been set, I can start the session to start processing. When the session starts, the two pre-processing workers will be spawned, and they'll immediately start processing the movies that were found in the folder I specified. These pre-processing workers complete motion correction, CTF estimation, particle picking, and particle extraction for each movie very quickly. As exposures are processed, you'll see their status and their thumbnail at the top in the exposure feed. You can also use the individual tab to follow each exposure as it's processed. Motion correction and CTF plots are shown on the left, and the actual exposure and the current pick locations are shown on the right. The exposure viewer allows you to zoom in on the exposure, set a low-pass filter to more easily see particles, and even manually pick particles right on the micrograph. In the overview tab, you can inspect all computed attributes of your exposures and set thresholds that will include or exclude the particles from these exposures in further processing steps like streaming 2D classification and streaming refinement. As exposures are processed, CrySpark Live will check if their attributes fall within these ranges and automatically reject or accept them. You can also reject an exposure manually in the Exposure Viewer. The Browse tab allows you to plot different attributes against each other and download filtered attributes as a CSV file. This table is also helpful for navigating to specific exposures. The Picking tab is where you will perfect your particle picks by setting parameters and dialing in picking thresholds. By default, CrySpark Live will pick particles on your exposures using the Blot Picker, which uses several different sized Gaussian shaped masses as templates. For some datasets, this may be good enough, but for most, you can 2D classify these initial blob picks to create a few effective templates that can be used to repick particles across your entire dataset. You can repick particles at any time during the data processing session, as it doesn't take much time. But to save even more time, you could test your particle picking settings using the Test Adjustments button on a single exposure. I can select a few classes to use as templates for the template picker. I'm going to set a particle diameter and hit Test Adjustments to see these settings on the current exposure. The exposures will be processed almost instantly, and I'll be able to see how my new settings compare to the original settings. Once I'm happy with my settings, I can instruct CryoSpark Live to repick particles across the entire dataset by hitting Activate for All. This is a great example of what makes CryoSpark Live so powerful. You can instantly react to changes in your data collection session and try out different parameter combinations since CryoSpark will only redo the processing that is required to affect the desired results. If you noticed, when I hit Activate for All, every exposure reverted to picking status. 
That's because since we only changed the picker type, there's no need to redo motion correction or CTF estimation. This auto reprocessing feature is triggered whenever any parameter in CryoSpark Live is changed so the processing workflow remains efficient. Now that I'm happy with the templates used to pick particles, I can modify the NCC and power scores using the sliders to filter out unwanted particles that will eventually go into streaming 2D classification. As I change sliders, the pick locations are updated in the exposure viewer. I can flip through different exposures to see how my thresholds affect particles in micrographs at different defocus levels. Once I apply these thresholds, all existing and new particles will be thresholded. Now that I've dialed in my picking parameters, I can start my streaming 2D classification job. As new particles are extracted and thresholded by the CryoSpark Live workers, the streaming 2D classification job will align and classify them. When we first start the job, it'll create the initial class averages by quickly processing only a subset of the particles. One thing to note is that all jobs that run in CryoSpark Live are regular CryoSpark jobs. You can always flip into the main CryoSpark interface, navigate to your session, and view your jobs there. Now that the streaming 2D classification job has finished creating all the initial class averages, we can select all the good classes and all particles that belong to each of these classes will continue on to the next stages of processing. At any point, I can modify my class selection to tune which particles move on to streaming refinement. All particle processing jobs will react to any additions or removal of particles and deal with them appropriately. For example, if you modify the picking thresholds to be more stringent, which reduces the number of particles that are accepted, if there are enough particles removed, the streaming 2D classification job would switch to a mode where it recreates the class averages that it lines incoming particles to. This allows the class averages to stay relevant and help you react to any changes in your data collection session. Before we can start our streaming refinement job, we need an initial model. We can either start an ab initio reconstruction job here to create one, or we can load an existing model. I'll go ahead and start a new one, since it doesn't take much time. The final step of initializing our end-to-end -end CryoSpark Live real-time processing session is to start the streaming refinement job. This job will use the initial model to refine and reconstruct a high-resolution structure with incoming particles and will update as more particles are extracted from incoming exposures. I can either start the job using the parameters exposed here, or if there are more advanced parameters I want to set, I can hit build with custom parameters. This will create a job in the main CryoSpark interface where you can use the job builder to modify any parameters. When the streaming homogeneous refinement starts, it will take all the available particles up until that point and refine them against the initial model until convergence. At that point, the refinement job will stream in any new particles by backtracking the model to 70% of the last output resolution and start another round of high resolution refinement until convergence. This process repeats as more particles are added. As processing iterations are completed, we'll see the plots updated on the left and the 3D model that was created on the right. The 3D model viewer is a handy tool that you can use to instantly inspect your structure as particles are being processed. You can rotate the model, set a threshold, and even download it for further inspection in a tool like UCSF Chimera. At this point, I can leave my CryoSpark Live session running until all my movies are finished processing. Exposures will be pre-processed by the CryoSpark Live workers and accepted based on my CTF fit threshold. Then, particles that are picked by the template picker will be filtered by my NCC and power thresholds. Then, extracted particles will be 2D classified and filtered based on my selected class averages, and finally, reconstructed in a high resolution structure, all without any input automatically. If at any point I notice that data processing is not going in the direction I want it to, I can always change any of these parameters, and the reprocessing system in CryoSpark Live will take care of redoing only the work that needs to be done, and nothing more allowing me to iterate very quickly, all before my data collection even finishes. Once all my movies have completed processing, I can mark the session as complete. At any time, I can take the results that have been created by CryoSpark Live and further process them in the main CryoSpark interface. I can use the outputs directly from streaming 2D classification or streaming refinement to continue processing. I can also get all the exposures and particles that were processed in this session directly into my workspace by using the export actions. This concludes a typical data processing session in CryoSpark Live. 
Hopefully, you got a glimpse of how easy it is to extract powerful insights from your data in such a short period of time.